We always begin a story with a blank page. At the top of this one, we have Someone is Wrong on the Internet by Jay Wilburn. And let's see if we can make something of this. Glenda Gimp, not Gimp, Glimp. That'd be a whole different story if that was her middle name, wouldn't it? Glenda Glimp Connor burst into the internet cafe right across <laughs> glad you like that one Zach uh, right across from the modern art outside the convention center Uh, the place was packed. This had to be the most business. Uh, this had to be the most business on internet cafe had seen since the early 2000s. She realized she was still wearing her Zenline staff pass with what she was here to do. She might not want to advertise her employer. Okay. She slipped the plastic plastic rectangle and the lanyard under all right let me spell lanyard correctly she's uh, let me put slip correctly too apparently i'm editing instead of writing she slipped the plastic rectangle in the lanyard under her pullover then it was time to find that bastard she used a pad word inside her head and then i said it out loud all right. She weaved between the tables that were obviously new, but made to look rustic, as if this place in the middle of the city had just gone out and chopped some raw edge wood for their tabletops. When that jerk posted a picture of where he was right after all that stuff he said about her father. She recognized the tables, the blurred images <clears throat> of the modern art outside and the reflections of the cafe's name in the in the window 
She was in full stalker mode, but she was tired of all these lies and terrible jokes told about her late dad, let's say late father. She was in full stalker mode, but she was tired of all these lies and terrible jokes told about her late father um, by cowards behind a keyboard. She was all for Me Too and every other empowerment movement but her father was a lovely and loving man who lived for her till he died when she was five. Linda, okay, hold on. Let me have her move towards something. She got the angle. Identified the window and recognized the furry, dirty little man in his stocking cap looking like he could be homeless or in style. He must have worn that stupid cap all the time because it was the same one in her profile picture, in his profile picture. She moved diagonally through the packed tables. and approached him from behind. All right. Glinda missed her mom. Her dad had been 80 when she was born. And mom was exactly half his age at the time. She had died less than 10 years ago from cancer. Okay. So she didn't have to see or hear all these lies. All right, let me say something else here. They were very much in love. Uh, Glinda had six other half-siblings from almost as many other women. Some of them were older than her mom. She never 
spoke to any of them. And they never called her dad while he was still alive. Those few years she had him. Okay. Dipping pretty deep in backstory again. It's becoming a bad habit of mine. Okay. Let's say mom had died less than 10 years ago from cancer, so she didn't have to see or hear all these lies. Glenda missed them both like it was yesterday. The jerk leaned over his phone that he held above his keyboard. That weapon of cowardly lies. Glenda stopped a few steps from him and clenched her teeth so tight that her jaw ached. She wanted to scream, to hit, maybe even to bite, but she wanted to keep her job. So she took a few beats to steady herself. A couple more guys and one girl stepped past Glinda and engaged the jerk. They laughed and spoke over the top of each other with excitement. Glenda stepped back and leaned against a rough post that looked like it might have just been cut and put up that very morning. Or it could have held up the internet cafe for a hundred years. She took out her own phone. All right, let me pull this up so I'm not writing into the empty space down there. She took out her own phone and pretended to be looking up something or texting so she could wait for the others to leave. If he left, if he left with them, she wasn't sure if she was going to follow or not. This felt dangerous. It might be unhinged. 
she was all raw nerve in need of in need of an outlet. Okay. She got bored of them talking about thing okay talking about the panels her own company had set up Glinda actually did open her phone and looked and looked over his post about her father, Alfonso Glimp Connor, as if that was going to help her keep it together. She followed a couple of links. They all went to trash sites that promoted all sorts of conspiracy theories. Her father had been subjected to that his whole life. Being an actor, everyone assumed he was up to dirty business. Every starlet that died from a drug overdose became fodder for theories about murder and cover-ups. For the internet, there were the true crime shows. All, all of it was bunk. That was exactly how her father said it. Bunk was one of those words he kept over from his day and age and continued to use. She started to read the comments, but immediately regretted it. That was a lesson she had to relearn over and over. Okay. Um, Alfonso Connor had been an actor. Working on a few Ronald Reagan movies in his early career and a few John Wayne movies in his middle career. 
He went on to be a producer. Um, an independent politician on the state level. Publisher, an artist. Okay. Okay, a publisher, an artist, a yoga guru later in his life, but before Glinda came along. Let's see what else. And by the time she knew him in her childhood, he was a gracious, kind, attentive, and thoughtful. My computer fell weird there for a second. A thoughtful old man. All his days of fast cars. Um, excess booze. And public divorces were long over. That was the man. These jerks behind their keyboards who were never there and never knew him would never understand. The others left and the keyboard warrior I actually hate that term. I don't uh, I don't use that and I don't call people that uh, in my life. I'm just assuming this might be something that uh, in her anger she might say. Um, but no, I don't I don't <laughs> I don't ever call anyone a keyboard warrior. Not that I know of. Who knows what I may have said at times when I was mad, but I don't I don't think I've ever done that to anybody. I, I don't like cliche kind of things like that, but I, I think it's appropriate for this uh, for this story and this character. The others left and the keyboard warrior returned to slumping over his screen above a screen. This guy was the target audience for Zenline. and all their awareness products and services that just worked like any other social media to keep guys like this plugged into their screens for as long as possible. She always felt a little bit of contempt for the audience they served. This guy 
seeing him in person after that nasty post. He disgusted her. All right, let me fix a spell in there real quick. He disgusted her. She saw him as something dirty, almost dripping with his filth. Glinda reached out for his back, but then drew her hand away. She was shaking. I say she shook. If I can avoid putting a was in, I need to do that. She shook. Tears burned her eyes before they could even well up enough to fall. Uh, tears burned in her eyes before they could even well up enough to fall. Okay. She thought she might throw up. Maybe throwing up on his favorite stocking cap. would be all the revenge she ever needed. I hate you, she breathed out. He looked up, adjusted his glasses and turned and turned to face her. Did you say some? Are you okay? His stool squeaked back along the fake tile on the floor. More people turned toward her, say toward them. More people turned toward them at, at that noise. Several moved at once to brace her as her knees buckled. Um, okay, let's see if we can spell any of this correct. There we go. All right, I think we're close to finished with this story. I don't see much else that can that can happen with it unless it's going to turn like uber violent or something and I don't think that's what this story is about all right she could still hear them all clearly even as her vision stayed black I'm okay I'm okay she said while she was still blind. The world formed back around her. Most people in the packed cafe were still talking and laughing among themselves.
a few squatted around her as she sat, leaned back against that rough hued post. The decorative splinters hurt the back of her head. He was there too. That lying piece of garbage. His dirty hair stuck out from under that cap. He probably rarely ever took off. His round, greasy face stared into her with all the concern he did not show her father. He reminded her of one of those guys who live streamed for hours upon hours in their sweaty little rooms. All right. She showed her teeth and said, my father was a good man. He nodded. I'm sure he is. Are you feeling okay? Do you want me to call an ambulance? None of the stuff you say about him is true. He tilted his head and spoke to someone above them. I think she's confused. We might need to go ahead and call I'm not confused about anything, she shouted. Everyone froze. The jerk said, okay, we won't do anything you don't want. She shook her head. It was too late for that. Listen. Listen, you, she demanded. He was never in a sex cult. He, none of his wives were slaves. Um, 
he wasn't involved in any of the children who disappeared. Uh, let's see what else. Um, no sacrifices. No secret. Okay, let me spell something right here. No sacrifices, no secret organizations. He was just a kind old man who couldn't hurt anyone. The guy looked up and then squinted at her again. Who are you talking about? My father was a good man. Okay. Who was your father? Let's make it is. Let's keep him present tense. Who is your father? Can I call him or someone else for you? Okay. I don't want anything from you. I want you to shut the hell up. He held up his hands and surrendered. Let's say in surrender. And he held up his hands in surrender and stood for backing up a couple steps. Glenda fought her way to her feet. She felt she felt weak. But a new wave of dizziness passed on its own. Okay. Let me figure out how to wrap this up real quick. <clears throat> what you say hurts people. I don't know who you are or what you're talking about, you crazy. He looked to the others standing around and just shook his head without finishing. She pointed at him as she moved toward the door. Not so easy to say mean things when others are around, is it? I don't know. He looked to the rest of the gathered strangers and appealed to them. I don't know her. I've never 
met her before. I don't know what she's talking about. I hate you. She cried again and moved toward the door, toward the doors. The guy turned around and yelled out, Someone took my computer. Hey, was this some kind of distraction? Stop her. Glinda was already out the door and crossing to the convention center again. She had no idea who took his computer. But she thought it served him right. Her father couldn't have done any of that stuff. No matter how many people said he did. Maybe losing his laptop would slow down his lies for a while. One down, a billion more to go. She muttered to herself as she fished her um, staff. Okay, let me fix something here real quick. We're in the last sentence, I think. As she fished her staff pass out of her pullover to get back inside the center. All right. 